Hey guys, I'm Davey Wavy, creator of the gay erotic website Hemorose.tv, and today I am joined by sex coach Finn Dearheart, and today we are talking about gay sex, and in particular, the porn star rebellion. Mm -hmm. Today we are rebels with a cause, so let's get started. <laughs> Hemorose Live is sponsored by Hemorose.tv. Created by Davey Wavy, Hemorose.tv has everything that you love about porn. The models, the cum shots, the fucking, and combines it with authenticity, vulnerability, pleasure, and sexual exploration. Through explicit erotic videos that are co-created by a team of gay sex experts, all designed to give you the best gay sex of your life. It is time to join the gay porn revolution at H-I-M-E-R-O-S dot tv himros dot tv it's like porn but what better <laughs> it's better <laughs> oh girl how was your week <clears throat> well my week has been every moment of my day scheduled and will be so until saturday night i'm just making peace with that <laughs> wow well saturday night's only two nights away so that's not yeah i know i know it's not too far <laughs> Yeah, you're you're almost there. You're almost there. A lot of stuff on your plate. Lots going on. Yeah, I got an, an event tonight that I'm doing a love and lust um, workshop, and then tomorrow night I'm actually hosting a cuddle party, and also doing stuff for other events in the future. All kinds of stuff, painting and what all. What happens? What happens at a cuddle at a cuddle party? Well, <laughs> yes, and it's really actually rad. Of all the things that I do, it blows my mind. Like I put a lot into like the content around certain workshops and I get so excited about wanting to just like educate people. And I'll have like maybe like 12 to 15 guys come and we like have 40, 45, 50 guys come to the cuddle parties. Um, but we start out with like a circle to kind of set some intentions and bring their focus to like, why are we here? And then play some games to help them connect and drop in and by around eight, or so like it starts at seven we let them freestyle and it's just like this massive cuddle pile and we serve food and drinks and it's just really fun and they're like always like oh my god this is amazing we want more of this I'm like okay i'm happy to help make cuddle parties Do, are people like making out during the cuddle party or just yeah, totally sometimes yeah i tell them sensuality is absolutely encouraged um but we want to make it where people don't feel pressure to hook up and we don't actually move into sex because that's for other events because we want them to explore what's underneath their desires for sex often or like other needs and um you know like their edges and around boundaries and consent and yeah we let them make out and play if it starts to get too steamy I, there's never been like an issue where people like just erupted into fucking but um right i don't right. mind i let it kind of get a little steamy because i want them to understand that that's part of our sexual desire is the intimacy component so i would love to go to something like that but i also feel like I just have such a, a an uncomfortable relationship with like, like, mm -hmm. uh, this is just shit. We're like two minutes into this and this thing Get is it. Got, got real. <laughs> I don't know of like people taking stuff from me that mm -hmm. when I don't want to give it, like quite frankly. And totally. um, like, I just feel like, uh, like I would be all about going to a cuddle party if um, like, I really trusted the people that I was with or felt like they weren't there to try to like take something from me that I didn't want to give or mm -hmm. it's like that feeling you get when someone hugs you, but you know that they're like not hugging you for you. They're doing it for them. Like they're taking something from you. Absolutely. I do. I know exactly. I can relate to what you're saying on a personal level myself, but I also, that's one of the very dynamics that we're wanting to help highlight for guys um, and teach them a vocabulary around like their feelings and that whole thing of like touching for me versus touching for you. And one of the warm up exercises we do is like saying no and like just dis discussing boundaries and how to, you know, say no to things um, and don't have to explain why you can just say, no, I don't want to. We give them practice rounds with each other saying that before we freestyle. So everyone's kind of in a space where they're already really yeah. vulnerable and ready to like really get real about their feelings. And it's just been really positive. Um, and I also so, tell you, if, if you want to hang out and watch, if you just want to witness, that's a totally awesome way to participate too. You don't have to sit in the middle, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. And, and also to clarify, like for me, it, it's not even about like, like I, I'm open to cuddling, it, I think with anyone for the right reasons. Like it's not about age or body types or shape or being attracted to someone or not. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's more the energy that they're showing up with. Right. Like I'm, 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 I'm DTC for, 
with anyone. <laughs> yeah. But but Sorry. it's yeah, we just got to be on the same page. Um, cool. Well, maybe someday I'll maybe someday I'll take. I love time. that. Yeah, and also like those are the that what you illustrated there is exactly one of the things that we want people to to feel and confront in themselves because that also will show up, you know, in your hookups and the way that we connect with sex. Um, yeah giving a little space for that to be safe, you know, like the, the stakes are lower in a cuddle party than they would be at like a sex club. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I've had that feeling in a sex club before, like, holy shit, like I'm being taken from, or, you know, and that feels more vulnerable and immediately to me more arresting than like at a cuddle party where I can just like turn it down and feel a little safer and held. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The things got real here. Um, <laughs> So, well, it sounds like you had a busy week. Um, <laughs> a lot of fun. I um, I was chatting with you. I think on Tuesday we were planning some really big events that we're doing this summer. That yeah. I think we're both really excited about. Totally. And oh my god, on Tuesday I was just like riding this wave of creativity, <laughs> and I was feeling so inspired and coming up with like all these ideas of things I wanted to film, and like I just couldn't. And I had this like long list of to do to do items of like W nine forms and like website updates, and <laughs> I just couldn't. I was like, how am I going to squeeze all of this back into my body to like do these menial tasks? And <laughs> I was just trying to like force it all to come back in and happen. And you you had some great advice for me. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, when that muse is there, you don't say no to it because it's a gift when it's there. So you ride that and then, you know, like you'll wake up the next day likely and have like more of an analytical mind going and just, you know, kind of partitioning your work around that. I was like, whatever, this is going to stay with me for the rest <laughs> of my life. And of course I would, so I'm like doing my W9 forms, but also like, Oh, these beautiful ideas. And then of course I wake up the next day and it was like the crash after the high, like, uh -huh. I had some fairly creative things on my to-do list. I had to come up with my marketing plan uh -huh. for the next six months. Uh -huh. And, and I just had nothing. <laughs> I had nothing. So that's good advice. Do that. By the way, if anyone listening, I really do. Um, I think people think that there's this like whole team of like folks that make all this stuff happen. And, and while there are a lot of people that, that kind of support what we're doing in different ways, like the reality is I'm the only person that's really working full time on, on Hammeros <laughs> TV. So um, mm -hmm. if there's anyone listening who's passionate and has like a marketing background, specifically like digital marketing or, you know, a relevant, any sort of relevant skill set <laughs> to what <laughs> it is that we do, please send your resume to Davey at DaveyWavy.tv because uh, it's at the point where I really need to hire someone because, wow. yeah, I'm doing everything on my own. So now you know. Yeah, now um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> also uh if you guys haven't seen uh which you probably haven't um i uploaded a drag makeover video with my mom um and Haley star and Haley star's mom mm. on my um on my youtube channel and i say you probably haven't seen it because uh it, no one watched the it's like not about penises it's not about penises gay sex or porn therefore no one watched it um, <laughs> my, my audience is really well trained, but it's a, it's actually a super, it's a super cute video and it's really emotional. And, um, I'd love for you guys to, to check it out and see it and give it some love. Mm. It's just, I'll yeah. watch it. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah. It probably won't even come up in your, on your YouTube feed because like it has such a low view count relative no, to like, anything else. Oh, did? Well, when you subscribe to a channel, I get like I get a notification every time there's a there's several channels I subscribe to, and so okay. I, every time there's an upload, I see it. So okay, yeah. For for people that don't have notifications enabled, it's just like whether or not it comes up on your homepage. Gotcha. If like I think it has like ten thousand views, and my channel has one point one million subscribers. So YouTube's and YouTube's mind, they're like, oh, this video is trash. We're not <laughs> showing anyone. <laughs> so. Davy's toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, this week's Himroast.tv uh, erotic video is titled Porn Star Rebellion, and it features Adam Ramsey and Cocky Boys exclusive Calvin Banks. Finn, um, before we get started, <laughs> yes, <but. laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about 
Adam Ramsey. I mean, my no. relationship with Adam Ramsey. Yeah. Does, does he does he do it for you? I think he's really handsome, and I'm really <laughs> I'm really attracted to so many things about Adam. <clears throat> Tell us about it. I like the way that he articulates about his process. I really appreciate that. So, I mean, besides him being very sexy um, physically, I think he brings an emotional intelligence to the set. Like every, so he was the first, so, okay, here's the thing. I actually never knew Adam Ramsey. You know that I don't watch lots of porn. You know this. Right. Um, I never knew Adam Ramsey. That's why you think all of our videos are so great. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> no, like I used to watch a shit ton of porn, like, you know, earlier on in my life, but um, I'm into other things now a lot. So, but Adam, when he did the reveal, the video that I wrote a while back um, with, I think it was Max. Yeah. I was just like whoa, these two guys are really connecting. I really loved what they brought to the to the camera and I loved like the way Adam was looking at him. And then it just kind of grew from that point. You know, every time like I've seen him, um, like, in the, like in the documentary that he was talking about his body and his awarenesses and then the fact that he's studying psychology, I just really appreciate all the different layers that he's bringing. Um, so yeah. It, it it's funny because when people a lot of the reaction I've heard from people about that documentary is like oh he's so articulate as almost though the, the we kind of have this unconscious bias I think about porn mm -hmm. performers that like the expectation is that like they're flaky and like mm -hmm. that he's you know a he's a therapist and he you know he's bringing a lot of knowledge and wisdom and experience to tables like completely mm -hmm. catches people off guard which i really i really enjoy but he does have a um because now i've worked with him several times this like um it, i i can't even it's when he like so my my ex-boyfriend was on the shoot that we did in Joshua Tree where we filmed the documentary and every time that Adam would like say something to him or even look at him he would like melt he would just he mm. would just he'd be like ooh, ooh. <laughs> cuz he has this like mm. present like when he looks at you he sees you yeah that's what it feels like oh yeah. it's just like it yeah so you know what I think that is, is like a being centered in oneself. You know, if you're really centered in yourself, you can truly look out at other people. And I, that's what I mean. And he kind of seems like he brings that to the camera. Um, and that's what I think is so hot about him. It's not just, I mean, there's a lot of hot physical bodies, but something about the way that he shows up really gets my attention. I remember listening to a podcast of this woman that was following these, um, this like team of researchers that was like, they were following like a school of dolphins and they were learning how to communicate with the dolphins and like they had this like voice box with them where they could press buttons and like right. they were teaching the dolphins what their names were and everything and uh -huh. they asked the reporter they were like hey do you want to go into the water and like see the dolphins and she was like i've never swam with dolphins before that sounds so fun so she like jumps off the boat and there's a dolphin right there like mm -hmm. right in her face like two feet away from her yeah. and it's looking at her and and it's also doing the like <laughs> like the echolocation or whatever sonar shit mm -hmm. and she's like and it was looking at me she's like literally it can see my bones wow. like it can see through me and see my bone like she's like it was looking at me in a way that i have never been looked at before where i've like felt so seen mm -hmm. and she's like i just started like she just immediately started crying like it wow. was just that's how it is when Adam Ramsey looks at you. He's carrying dolphin totem medicine. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh my God, I'm seen. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We're goofy today. Today. <laughs> <laughs> You also you requested an advertising banner for for your website for <laughs> for Amrose TV, um, and and I love that your note was like specifically like <laughs> get a picture of Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, this is true. I don't know if he listens. Anyway, well, if he does, uh, porn star maybe rebellion. Talk about it. <clears throat> <laughs> so this video is actually really fun to make. Um, and hey, I'm actually in it for all the times mm -hmm. when people say, are you going to be in a video? Here you go. I, <laughs> I, I play the horrible, stereotypical porn director. Um, and what we do this, uh, Well, we do this whole thing at the beginning of the video where I'm like, I like walk onto set and I'm like, okay, like we need to do the doggy style, reverse cowgirl. We need to do the <laughs> Eiffel Tower. Um, these are all sex positions, by the right. way. 
and uh, <laughs> and I'm like, you need to open up to camera and like it's very convincing. I feel like um, I mean, I don't want to like say that I'm the Meryl Streep of of gay porn, but you do want to say that. <laughs> I think I might get a nomination <laughs> <laughs> for my five second role. <laughs> yeah, no one has ever called me the Meryl Streep of gay porn until now where I just called myself it. So anyway, um, the guys, instead of being like, okay, yeah, we're going to do that. They say like, look, we're sick of it. We've done this a million times. Um, and so I tell them like, if, if you think you can do it better yourselves, then fucking try it. So mm -hmm. I, I toss them a handheld camera and, uh, we see them filming themselves having sex and it cuts between like footage from the camera that they're holding uh, cuts between that and like professional uh, camera footage. So it's like a combination of both. It's pretty creative. And uh, the concept is basically built on the premise that most traditional porn, gay or straight, is is fake. Uh, and I know that when we say it, people are like, oh yeah, like gay, gay porn's fake. I mean, it's probably why Finn, like you, you mentioned, it's not like a really big part of your practice because like, mm -hmm you you see it for what it is and 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 like i think i, I don't know I, people realize that it's fake but i don't re i don't think they realize how fake it is um yeah and i actually just finished right. recording you what's that i said yeah right i know it's like one thing to know it like um <clears throat> like on one level but to really kind of know that or like have experienced it or something is different yeah, yeah. I, I mean i just recorded a youtube video and it was like so this is the thing that's tough for me is like, I don't want to poo-poo gay. I, I really enjoy gay porn. I don't want to poo-poo. I right. don't want to poo-poo gay porn. Uh, I'm, I'm pro gay porn, but um, I think we need to like appreciate it for what it is, and what it isn't. Right. Um, so I just, right before we did this part podcast, I just recorded a YouTube video. It might be up tomorrow. Um, seven things that people don't know about, about gay porn. Mm. And a lot of it is pointing out the different ways that it's, that it's fake like um mm -hmm. like if 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 you see in a video uh like a guy is shooting his load and then it cuts to his like his orgasm face most porn sets only have one camera because it's expensive uh so they film the cum face separately <laughs> so if you see the cum face like that's not his actual cum face like he's acting mm -hmm. um and like I mean, nice. that's just like one example of many. And I mean, we've talked about a lot of gay poor models are actually straight and um, that on set, the directors are really like telling the models what they need to do and do this position and stop and start. Um, it's incredible that at the end of a shoot, you can have a 20 minute video that comes together in the way that it does mm -hmm. um, because it's, because it's, that's just not how it happens. But my, I guess my question is like, does that, does that even matter? Like, mm -hmm. okay, porn is fake. So what? Like, why do we care? Should we care? Do we care? You know, I mean, we go to the yeah. movies. Right. We know that the movies are fake and we enjoy watching them. So. Well, see here, I think that's a good point that you just made though, because I think it's not, like you said, not to poo poo anything really. Cause I think we want to highlight what it is rather than say, ooh, that's bad. It's like, well, what actually is it serving? You know, so then the, the, the fakeness, and we watch a movie, we know like maybe the blood that's being spilled on a horror movie, it's like not real. So at least not, it's a different way of being. So the thing about sex and watching it on porn, I think that what happens is it like not realizing that these power dynamics are being enacted or fantasy, or that like these bodies aren't what we should be and expect of ourselves that's the issue you know it's like not having a vocabulary to understand or to talk about the reality of sex you know so it's like all being bottlenecked and squeezed into this like world of porn instead of like us just going oh that's like candy and we can enjoy that but it's not like our diet you know like i think that's to me that's what's important about it you know to say it's bad or like then it's like introducing like moralizing i know that's not what you're doing at all so Things like highlighting what is it that we do want to experience. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a good point. Like when we go to the movies, we know what we're watching is fake. And I think when people consume porn, they're not seeing it necessarily through that lens. Like yeah. the, to your example, the blood in the movie is fake, but do we also realize that the cum 
in the porn is oftentimes fake that they like literally put an <laughs> IV bag. They put an IV bag with fake semen in it uh -huh. and the tube goes down along the side of the dick. So if you ever see a guy like grabbing his dick mm -hmm. in a porn and someone's mm -hmm. like squeezing the bag and it shoots this load of fake semen all over the other person's face or their ass mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, like a picture of their mom. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um so so if the question is like does it matter i for me i guess the answer is like yes and no uh -huh. i would say like if you're using porn to jerk off and like to build erotic energy to arouse you like maybe maybe it doesn't matter uh -huh. um i mean i i use porn to jerk off to typically yeah. um it's it's harder for me now to find stuff that i really enjoy but um i can jerk off to it and still know what it is mm -hmm. Uh, on the other hand, like if you're using porn in the way that I used porn when I was younger, which is to inform the sex that I'm having, right. um, like when we were in Amsterdam, when we were doing our, one of the tantric workshops, uh, for Himmeros TV, one of the models said that the disconnected sex that he has, uh, on camera in traditional porn scenes is the same sex that he has off camera. Like when we talked about how that's not like real sex. Right. He was like, but that is the sex that I had. It was like a revelation for him. Like mm -hmm. he didn't realize that there was another flavor of sex than what he was serving on, on camera. <laughs> um, and he said, he's like, I don't like sex. Like in real life, it's just something I do. I don't like it. And we're mm -hmm. like, well, maybe that's because there's this whole other world of sex that you haven't explored that mm -hmm. like we would love to help open the door for you <laughs> to, to experience. Um, yeah, I think we've all like, we've all experienced that too in hookups, you know. Whereas it's like, are you a person on the other side over there? Or are you just like clink, clink, clink? You know, like who are you? You know, yeah. It's like this. I could be anybody, and you wouldn't care. You just need like a screen to throw projections onto right now, and I don't enjoy that feeling. So um, that's the difference between really being embodied and like letting like who you really are kind of show through. And let your body just kind of like demonstrate your feelings with sexual activity you know that's and that's why i guess if we look at porn and we look at it like it's, it's like literal to me i use the coach like if you literalize all these things that's no different than like literalizing any religious myth that we have been told you know like it's just it means yeah. something in fantasy but it doesn't mean anything on the realistic side of things and yeah i think i think the 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 trick is to not believe the lie right when you can like watch mm -hmm. porn enjoy it but yeah but like yeah but know know what it is i have like virtual uh -huh. me and my boyfriend like i want to have like a virtual three-way with he's like this like um like bring in you know sometimes you can bring in porn to bring an actor or somebody into the room and have like a virtual three-way and watch with each other and i think that's like fun way to like play with these things you know mm -hmm. yeah when we were in amsterdam um uh, so I was watching, I'm starting to get some of the, the rough cuts of the videos and, and uh, I was watching one of the videos with um, two models having this like really um, just yummy, authentic scene. And they're in this kind of like awkward, uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. uh, and they couldn't, they were having trouble navigating it. Like they couldn't figure out how to like, <laughs> get around it. And what I love is that the the director who, who's also the editor on it, he left it in. Mm -hmm. Like this kind of like awkward moment where they're like communicating with each other and like laughing and being silly mm -hmm. in traditional porn, like that would be cut out. That was like, to me, that's a moment. Mm -hmm. Like that's a real moment. And that's something that like happens during sex. Yeah. You know, where you like slip on the lube and like they catch you and you <laughs> laugh or he's like fucking you and you queef and, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, That's like leave that in, leave yeah. that in. Um, um, or like when you're getting like you, you have uh, difficulty like getting hard, like all that stuff gets cut out. Uh -huh. And I think it's fun to see it in because that's real. That's. Well, maybe one day we'll see, we'll do a Himmeros TV video where like the bottom gets messy. Right. And oh wow, that would be that would be controversial. 
Yeah, totally. And there's like a compassionate moment rather than like a severance of connection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they awesome. just cut his head off and like <laughs> quarter him and hang uh, him at the gate of the castle. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, in porn that I, that I want to explore is that um, like the models are usually doing what the director tells them to do. We kind of like touch on this a little bit, but so the director will be like, okay, now I want you guys to 69. Now go get the condom and I want you to fuck, whatever it is. And what we did in this video was, you know, the, that we're filming for Humorous TV is, is, is we asked the models to do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, instead of the director directing the sex, he like directs the camera to capture the sex, right? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, so in other words, the sex becomes like an actual authentic expression of, of their desires. And that's what we did in this video in Porn Star Rebellion, but it's what we try to do in, in, in all of our content. Um, but as someone who has produced a lot of porn at this point or erotica, whatever the fuck I'm doing, I will also say that I really do, I, I get it. I get why directors default to do this, do this, do this, because oftentimes, um, when we say like, what is it that you want to do? They'll reply by saying, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Mm. Uh, in, in the same way that a lot of people in general don't know what they want, what they want to do during sex. Um, and, it, or even if they do know, they don't feel comfortable communicating it. And you can especially imagine they don't feel comfortable communicating it to a group of people that they might not know well with a camera in their face. Right. Um, so, so when we say like, you know, what do you want? It's oftentimes like a, a deer in the headlights. Um, in, in Amsterdam, to bring it back again, like the same model who said that the sex that he has in real life is the same as the sex in, in, in porn, like for the life of him, it was so, so challenging for him to express what he wanted. It wasn't until the final scene on the last day. Mm -hmm. um, and like, maybe he knew what it was, maybe he was embarrassed to say it, but like, he, he just kept saying, like, I want to do whatever you need me to do in the scene. So you can certainly understand why a director would just say, look, like, fuck, we're on a schedule. We have all this stuff that we need to shoot. Mm -hmm. I need you to do this, this, and this. And most porn isn't trying to make a statement or a message or help gay men have better sex. So who gives the fuck, right? Like, it's a business. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I Like, I get it. Yeah. it it doesn't inspire me or like make me interested, but like, I get why they do it. Yeah, of course I get it too. It's a bottom line and it's for a particular aim. So it makes total sense. Yeah. The motivation. Yeah. So thank you for listening. Also, we should talk about <laughs> the cum shot at the end. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you enjoy the cum shot at the end? I did. I actually enjoyed this whole video a lot. <laughs> And not what did you enjoy about I it? really loved that it had like this, like it looked like amateur. It was like they were enthusiastic. Calvin was really enthusiastic. Just like, I don't know. It's, he was like sparky and excited and they were kind of like moving around and it was, it looked like amateur, which I liked. Um, you're, you're, well, it's also it, the, the POV, like the point of view is different. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I like that part. Yeah, they're holding a camera. Mm -hmm. And so you're, instead of being a fly on the wall, it feels more intimate. Yeah, it did, and, yes. Like I was in it, like in it. And they kept acknowledging you, right? Mm -hmm. Like Calvin would look towards the camera and like smile at you. Like he knows mm -hmm. you're watching and he loves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was, mm -hmm. yeah, that that was hot. Um, do, do you ever, do, do you ever, do you enjoy like POV porn like that? Or mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you don't really, yeah. Mm hmm. I do actually. When I, when I will watch porn, that's like more the what I'm drawn to. Actually, I love mm -hmm. it. I used to like you know when Tumblr was a thing. <laughs> yeah. There was like amateur gay porn, like all kinds of ones that I bookmarked. That that's what I wanted to see. I love watching boyfriends have sex. I love what you know. Even like if it's a boring, like scene, you know, if they just set up their camera and like fuck, I like watching guys have sex with each other that um, that you can tell that they like having sex with each other, like for who they are to each other, you know, it really gets me excited. Um, and just that point of view thing too. So yeah, I think that's hot. It's almost like you're having a threesome with them. Mm -hmm. Cause can like they're- Transport yourself into it more easily. 
Well, and they're they're like inviting you to experience. There's like a different level of like. Mm -hmm. I guess most porn is you watch it passively, like you're just kind of there, like the mm -hmm. fly on the wall. Mm -hmm. You're observing it, but this is like active engagement of them bringing you into the space, like choosing to have you there, showing you what they want you to see. Um, it's like a different level of involvement, mm -hmm. and there is a really great come shot at the end where Calvin shoots a huge load while his ass is getting eaten by Adam, and and Adam's filming it. So you're like watching it and Calvin's like coming into his mouth and the part that, <clears throat> excuse me. You're the Clint. <laughs> I'm going to start crying. The part that really gets me <laughs> is, is then Calvin licks the cum off his dick. Uh. And I die. <laughs> Every time I see it, I die. <laughs> and then I'm reborn just so that I can watch it again. And uh -huh. then I die. Uh. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and I love that moment, too. I thought it was very surprising. I was not expecting it to go there. Mm, it's the secret to life, girl. Mm -hmm. Spontaneity. Sucking, sucking the cum off your dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I haven't been able to do that since I was... I could put my dick in my mouth when I was 15, and I cannot do it anymore. Yeah. The did you work at it, though, to do it? Like, like, did you practice each night? No, I actually... You know what? I'm not just saying this, but I learned how to do that during church because I would go to the bathroom <laughs> during church. And, and suck your own dick. Yep. Learned how to do it in the bathroom. Nothing makes me harder than the word of God. So, um, well, it was just like, you know, I got to get out of here and be myself. So, um, were you like upside down in the stall? Like, no, I would sit on the toilet. I would like kind of sit on the toilet and like kind of scoot down or I was hunched down and like kind of could put my pelvis forward and like would reach underneath my legs and pull myself forward. And I guess something about being 15 and a little bit more bendy than I am now, <laughs> even though I do yoga and stuff. Um, Finn, yeah. how did you get scoliosis? Well, I was trying to suck my own dick in church. No, I, I can't do it anymore though. I try. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I, I used to be able to lick the tip. Mm -hmm. But I, I would work at it each night. And my my strategy, I was not as limber as you. I would throw my legs up over my head uh -huh. and um, like on the side of the couch. Right, yeah, yeah. And, and, and do it. Um, interestingly, I tried to, maybe like five years ago, I, <laughs> um, I tried to, to, to do a split. And I was... At the time, I was in gymnastics and I was in Pilates. And I told both of my instructors, I was like, I want to do a split. And my Pilates instructor, she was like, well, you know, it's going to take a lot of work. So why is this so important to you? And I was like, well, I like, I want to be able to do a split on like some guy's face. <laughs> and she was like, okay, great. Like, it's going to take a while. <laughs> and then my gymnastics instructor just like threw me into it. And I fucking like tore my hamstring and I was like <laughs> incapacitated oh, no. for for like two months because I couldn't fucking, oh my God, it was so painful. If you've ever like really torn your hamstring, it's, it, it like takes a year to heal. It's like mm -hmm. horrible. Mm -hmm. Wow. Anyway, let's take it there. Okay. So the gymnastics teacher, that's bizarre to me. Oh my God. His like way of teaching was like, you like, oh, can I learn how to do a back handspring? He's like, okay, do it. Like it was just. <laughs> It's like ex-military. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine if you're like six years old because like fucking like six-year-olds don't give a shit and they like don't get hurt. But yeah. at the time I was probably 30 and like, <laughs> like right. anyway. So let's answer some questions. Uh, I know some of these are a little intense, so uh, I want to give us some extra time. Question mm -hmm. number one. By the way, if you guys have any questions, send them to Davey at DaveyWavy.com. TV. Question number one. So for about a year ago now, uh, I met a guy from London who visits my city for business periodically. He's 47 and I'm 23. Age doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to build a foundation. Every time he's in town, I spend time with him at his hotel. We go out for dinner. <laughs> Over time, he's expressed how much he cares about me. And to protect myself, I don't say I love you back to him but he told me that that's okay. So presumably the guy's saying to him that he loves him. Um, in November, he expressed to me that he loves me so much, he wants to see me succeed and even attend my wedding one day, which I find very sweet. Mm -hmm. He's also expressed that he doesn't want to actually do anal sex with me because he doesn't want to ruin what we have. I think he doesn't want me to actually fall in love with him. 
but I think I am and it sucks. Mm -hmm. This January he came back to town and we had an actual Airbnb so we got to chill and watch Netflix. He made me dinner and he really wanted to show me the gay film God's Own Country. I loved the film and got really emotional because I realized that I could probably never have that with him. He asked me what was wrong and I couldn't tell him that I really want him because I don't want to complicate things. Mm -hmm. I also haven't been able to find a stable relationship with any guy other than that. Should I break things off with him? But that would really, that, but that would literally hurt. That's the question. Should I break things off? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So I don't, am I missing something? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand what the problem is. Like, it sounds like this guy likes you. It sounds like he cares about you. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you like him and you care about him. Why wouldn't you fucking express that to each other and become boyfriends? Hmm. Well, I'm also wondering, you know, <clears throat> from the point of view of the person that is not writing this question, you know, like if he, we don't know, like we don't know what this other party is, if he cares about him very deeply, but also may not want to be in a relationship, you know, cause there's all kinds of reasons to, to, to make a relationship or not. I've cared about a lot of people and love some people very deeply that were not necessarily good boyfriends for me. Um, and some of that's been really painful for me, but um, I think it's important to not deny how you're feeling and maybe definitely open up a dialogue about how you're feeling with this man. You're wanting to be with him and be boyfriends with him just to tell like the things that you're telling us on the question, like, tell him, like open up the, the conversation with him. Yeah. I mean, it's important, I think, to tell the people in your life how, how like, we only get one shot at this, right? And we're not here for a particularly long amount of time. And if you're lucky enough to find someone that you have a connection with, then to, to express mm -hmm. that to them um, and risk being hurt if mm -hmm. it's not reciprocated is right. still always worth it. Like it doesn't, it doesn't always end in your favor. Um, but uh, it's, it's a risk that in life is, is it's one of those things that's just, you know, worth doing. Mm -hmm. um, and like the way I read this letter is that it sounds like this guy tells him that he loves him and mm -hmm. that, they do have a romantic connection. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. I get that there's an age difference, but the author here is saying that that doesn't really matter to them. So, so for me, it's like, if you've got this connection, if you feel romantically involved, like why, why would you break things off? You know, like that's, I just don't. Right. That seems a little knee jerk to just break it off. I'm feeling something by right. yeah versus like open up the conversation like it may not end in the perfect scenario that you're imagining but it also might end in a way that surprises you that's amazing too and and, and then you might actually have let's say you don't end up with him maybe you still have his love and support and and get to date other people or you know there's all kinds of scenarios if you just break it off that seems kind of protective and preemptive maybe yeah. And if he really does love and care about you and says that he wants to go to your wedding someday, that yeah. like, I, I think for you to tell him how you feel about him is not going to result in the end of this, of this friendship or relationship. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number two, <laughs> I have a really uncomfortable question to ask. It's hard for me to admit this. So I'm submitting my question anonymously, which it wasn't really, I mean, I saw your email address, so it wasn't really that anonymous, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to read that email address right now. No, I'm kidding. No. I'm not. Um, anyway. Huh. Um, so <clears throat> I'm submitting my question anonymously. I have a rape fantasy. It's not me getting raped, but that I want to rape someone. I'm really uncomfortable with how much this turns me on and I really don't know what to do about it. The more I think about it, the harder I get and the more I feel like a complete monster. I'm a nice guy with a good job and friends that I care about. So why do I want to rape someone? Mm. What do I do about this? Hmm. Finn Deerheart. <laughs> <laughs> Davey Wavy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just say, before I even answer the rape portion of this, I want to reiterate something that we've talked about frequently on here, and that is that fantasy in and of itself is a really valuable reservoir of um, 
emotional data. It's just information. It's like our brains and our souls kind of communicating to us in symbols, just like if we had a dream and we wake up and we have like a hunch about what the dream is about, but you know, li not literally. So a lot of fantasy is that way. Um, and just from a sex therapy perspective, um, fantasy is a way for therapists to get inside the mind of the, the patient and really know like what, what actually wounded you as a child around sex, you know? So when we're kids, we pick up all these different ideas about sex. And then when, as we interact with that, as we grow up, we have all these fantasies as adults. And those fantasies have clues embedded in them about what sex means for us and what it means for us to, to like be a sexual being. So that said, you know, we don't always want what we fantasize about. Um, but if we moralize about our fantasies and we just like judge them, then we miss the importance and the significance of what they actually contain. And that is like a lot of clues about our sexuality. So when it comes to this question, there are, there are some things that I do want to know because there's some dangling variables that we don't know. Like for one, there's a couple different kinds. It's really, really common to have rape fantasies. Like it's very common. One of my friends is a therapist and I was talking to him the other day. He's like helping a couple actually set up a successful rape fantasy so that they can experience this with each other. And there's a lot of things to consider, you know, so it's having a really cool conversation about it with him, but there, there's different kinds. And so it depends on the mind of the person that has it. Like if, is it part of your turn on for the person that you're raping to eventually get into it? Cause that's a different kind of rape fantasy. And it's like, Oh no, 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 no. I don't want it. I don't want it. You're forcing me. Okay, fine. I want it. God, I fucking love it. That's one kind of rape fantasy. And that is, you know, a way for the raper to feel like he is not too much, you know, like it's just like this Avenue into expression some, but the other kind of rape fantasies that actually that can be problematic is when it's like part of our turn on is, the actual pain and fear that the person is feeling that we're raping. So if that's actually what's turning you on, then yeah, you could talk about this with someone that's a professional. Um, and again, it's not like, oh, you're fucked up. It's like, you know, usually if that's what it is, if it's really turning you on to want to hurt somebody, it's typically one of a couple of things like, as a child, you were really victimized in some kind of way by a parental figure or like someone that you trusted and, and it was like an ongoing trauma in your life. And so, to be a sexual person, you're identifying with the aggressors that you were hurt by um, or, or any other kind of combination of psychological issues around that. So it kind of depends on what's turning you on about this. It's a little too sparse of information, but I would just say it's normal to think about things like that. And depending on the orientation of your fantasy for the person that you're raping, you know, if, you, if it concerns you, talk to somebody like a sex therapist or like a, a psychotherapist to really help you unpack around that and, and not just be alarmed by it, but be curious by like what that can mean for you. That's my answer. Yeah. And I think it's encouraging that he's even writing us about it. There's probably a lot of people who have this fantasy that just keep pressing it down and pressing it down. And totally. I think there's something really interesting and juicy about um, examining mm -hmm. that shadow side of our, of our sexuality. Um, the Absolutely. fact that he's able to like acknowledge it, and write an email about it, um, I think is a, is a really important step. I think it's more like when you don't acknowledge it and you keep pressing it away and you keep totally. pressing it away, that stuff like this can rear its head in really more problematic ways. Yeah, and I have to just, and just to disclose and be honest, like I really can get into rape fantasy from both perspectives. Like I have this whole, like it turns me on to feel like I'm just like, being forced you know into something as the victim but i also have like really gotten turned on fucking my boyfriends um multiple boyfriends that i've had um from this like idea of like you don't want this right now but i'm going to do it anyway because this is for me and it's like a fantasy you know but if like if, if he were to to like make me want to stop then that would interrupt my fantasy you know but mm -hmm. but i can get into and i can identify with that that's that sphere as well so um you know for me that does come from like identification yeah. with aggressors in my life <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah fantasy right. versus reality it's it's like a it's a thing it's a thing mm -hmm. as martha stewart would say it's a good thing <laughs> <laughs> question number three hi davy matt and finn hope you guys are well i'm a recent subscriber to himros.tv and i thoroughly am enjoying the content that you're creating i've been listening to these podcasts for a while 
So I thought I'd get in touch. First off, I feel it's important to recognize the work you are putting into creating inclusive erotic content. And I was thrilled to see your recent face fuck scene. Mm -hmm. Though not disabled myself, I work with many disabled people who are vibrant sexual beings, just like the rest of us able-bodied people. I was also delighted to see that this scene avoid fetishizing the disabled actor and portrayed him as an active participant in the encounter. Disabled people need far more representation in media in general. So thank you for the effort you're putting into making content that represents the whole spectrum of our community. Mm. So my absolute favorite scenes on Himrose TV are tied up um, and the circle jerk scenes. And I was hoping that you may be looking to create more similar content to these scenes, exploring the light bondage and edging fantasies, as well as mutual masturbation um, that you covered through the circle jerk. That was a question and then a question mark that you covered with the circle jerk. Uh, <laughs> for me and for many guys I know, penetrative anal sex isn't a huge turn on to watch in porn. So more scenes where anal isn't the focus would be awesome, which is such an interesting comment because I also get so much of the other side right. of that, which yeah. is like, like even the porn star rebellion, there's not an anal penetrative moment. And for mm -hmm. me watching that, I was never like, well, when's the fucking gonna happen? Uh -huh. But like, we're just so trained to, to, to see that, that that's like, it's not sex if it ain't anal. Right. Anyway, thank you again for the great content. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys put out next. Love, Mac in Scotland. So what a wonderful, thoughtful content uh, comment that was mm -hmm. so congratulatory of the work that we're doing. It just felt <laughs> it so important to read. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to answer your question about exploring light bondage, edging, um, and uh, mutual masturbation, actually all of those topics are going to be mm -hmm. um, revisited in future Hammerous TV videos. I just saw a flash of lightning. It's crazy. I live in Palm Springs where it doesn't even rain, and <laughs> it just lightninged. Wow. What does it mean, Finn? Zeus's thunderbolt. <laughs> we need to do more edging and circle jerk scenes. Yeah. Uh, Finn and I have mentioned on here before that we that we filmed a fabulous circle jerk scene in um, uh, where were we? Palm Springs. Palm Springs. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually that's one of my favorite videos. If you know Finn, if, if you can talk about it for a second, I can tell you when it's going to be released. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we it was cool. Um, we had a circle of, um, it was facilitated by a sexologist and um, it was all these different generations and body types uh, of people uh, showing up and expressing their sexy in their own way. And I kind of felt like it was like an, <laughs> like an anthropological study to watch each person do his thing in the circle um, and what he brought to it. it was really cool. And I would say confronting in the way for me where I just was like, wow, I really don't know if I'm as embodied as some of these men that I'm watching, you know, and just kind of kind of seeing my own experience as well. It was cool and sexy. Yeah. And I love to Dalton standing up and being all happy and <laughs> getting involved. Well, that was the thing that the models were really, I think, overwhelmed by like how ecstatic the older guys were in the group <laughs> and how expressive they were that, it almost like caused the models to shrink in, I think a little bit. Uh -huh. And um, not Dalton though. <laughs> no. Dalton stood up, and he's shaking that big dick. And he had a big grin yeah. on his face. He's playing off their energy. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, uh, so that, that video is scheduled right now to come out June 24th. I can pretty much guarantee that it's actually gonna come out later because um, we have another shoot in March and then a shoot in early June, which is probably gonna mean that it will get pushed back uh, even further as we get more videos into the lineup. Um, but there is also another edging video with Logan Cross and Diego Sands that's coming out. Um, and uh, light bondage is visited throughout, uh, including there's gonna be on February 25th, a, a really hot light bondage scene between Bishop Black and Caden Gray from Amsterdam. Mm. So yeah. set your calendars, folks. Why light bondage? <laughs> <laughs> Why not heavy bondage? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? What is light Why bondage? Not light bondage. That makes me think about like blonde ladies at the grocery store <laughs> talking about like, <laughs> like their Fifty Shades of Grey fantasies. I don't know. Um, Someday we should just dedicate a podcast to Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, 
I'm like, oh. he had a feather and he tickled me. <laughs> and, and everyone's like, oh my God, a feather. <laughs> I went to a Chippendales show. Did I ever tell you this? I went to Chippendales in Las Vegas. Yeah, you told me. Tell, oh, yeah. I love it. Tell it again. I can hear it. <laughs> it, it and, and it was just like, I mean, the audience was like 95% female. And you just realize in, <laughs> in going to a Chippendales show, like how rarely in life women are given permission to like express their sexuality. And, and like, and they've also spent $75 on this fucking ticket. So like, they're like, I'm going to get my money's worth. And the show literally starts with a song that goes sex, 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 sex. And all the women are just like, ah! <laughs> and these like cheesy, like Chippendale dancers come out and like, they're doing like these horrible like raps. And then they like rip their shirts and like every woman in the audience mm -hmm. just fucking like, squirts and like there's just puddles <laughs> everywhere and there's a 50 shades of gray segment where a woman from the audience is brought up onto stage and like blindfolded and there's like this whole um this like wall that it's on wheels and like you're just seeing the back of the wall and she gets blindfolded right and then they like turn it around to reveal all the sexy apparatus like the all the all the toys and the kinky shit and <laughs> literally it's like like a wand with like a feather on it and he like picks it up and all the women are like it's so kinky like, it's the it's the and i'm like i'm like thinking you know i'm fucking playing with like 19 inch butt plug okay. anal bead like vibrating like Aww. whatever the fuck and um poor ladies yeah <laughs> like, it's not the ladies that go to Folsom street though these women are very they have different capacity for this stuff <laughs> yeah these are the these are like the the housewives from like ohio that go to las vegas right right and like are yeah just dipping their toe into the water so god bless the the women at Folsom because <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's a lot it's a lot great we should do a 50 shades of gray himros video inspired by it mm. He pulls out like a horse cock like, <laughs> instead of the I feel like get Mr. S leather to sponsor it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I'm walking I, I just, go, oh God. <laughs> when I was in um, Amsterdam, I went to, they have a Mr. Maybe it's Mr. B's leather in Amsterdam. Why is it always an initial? I don't know. I'm sure there's something culturally in the subculture that has a significance around that. I'm going to investigate. Yeah. I'm friends so, with you, the owner. I'll go call him. <laughs> but, please. Yeah. And get back to me. So there's Mr. B's leather in Amsterdam. And I bought uh, like those like knee high socks, you know, those cute socks that are like, Oh yeah. And they say, fuck my socks off on the sides of them. Nice. It's amazing to um, know how many people look at your socks when you're wearing those because people comment. Right. People read them. Mm -hmm. People read them. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's, did we answer that question? I guess so. Uh, next week, we're watching a video with Dalton, with your, with your boy Dalton, called Morning Wood. Sweet boy. <clears throat> yeah. Finn, where can people get more of you? Uh, FinnDearheart.com. F-I-N-N-D-E-E-R-H-A-R-T. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And as always, more to come on my face. <laughs> Not from an IV bag. Not from an IV bag. Thank you. <laughs> uh. Okay.